Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. Here's the market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Tuesday, September 10th, 2013. Today's session we saw the uh, ES higher by 15 on the day and the NQs higher by 35 on the day. Very, very strong showing and we have good market internals as well. So uh, today we're going to grade the market, uh, the price action as an A. Uh, across the board, pretty solid with the uh, ES climbing 15, getting right up to the gap window, and the NQ futures breaking out to a new high and a new high close on the move, garnering the uh, the A rating. Also internally, we have very strong internals. If you see here, we had uh, plus 1,800 issues on New York and plus 1,300 on NASDAQ, so that definitely garners uh, an A rating since there was broad-based strength for the markets across the board here. So let's get down to business and take a look at the uh, individual uh, charts of the uh, leading futures. We'll start with the ES. All right, so here's the ES futures. You can see that we uh, had a very strong day. We pushed right up here to uh, close right about at the, at the gap window here. So going forward, the next real key level is going to be this gap fill. To the upside, the gap fill is going to be coming in at about uh, 1682 or so. And then above that, the key 8 ace level at 1687.50 is going to be the next bull target. To the downside, near-term support is going to be the day's low, and then below that, the 10 EMA coming at 1651.52. Alright, so here's a look at the NQ futures. The NQ futures are actually inherently more interesting than the, uh, net, than the uh, broad market futures. We've uh, pushed up to a new high on the move, which is, of course, always notable. But the key thing here is that we've closed exactly at this plus one ace level and also at the risk level here in the uh, off the seeker exhaustion from this 13. You can see that we got this 13 exhaustion sell signal in place here back at the very, very beginning of August. And that's held the market in check here and forced this thing to, uh, to go sideways to consolidate. Right now we're attempting to break out of this consolidation. We do have a, a close above the consolidation, but we need to get a follow-through candle to really break out of that. If we do get a follow-through candle to the upside, the levels to watch are be 31.76 and a half, which was today's high, and then above that, we're going to be looking at that 3,203 level, which is the plus two waist level. Uh, don't forget that that plus two waist level is going to be very, very key resistance if that trades. To the downside, key supports going to be 31.25 at the eight ace level. Then the next uh, level is going to be not too far below that, about 13, 11, uh, 16, something like that, 13, uh, 31, 15, right around the 10 EMA. I think the real, probably the real key feature on the day, though, was the uh, the market internals. The market internals were very positive on both sides. But here's a look at the uh, the cumulative advanced decline lines. We had uh, strong numbers both sides. So today we uh, curled up a bit on the uh, on the broad market side. Still pretty 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 well below the high water mark, high water mark of the move, but the Nasdaq side has really started to to, uh, to rally up here and is actually challenging the high water mark of the move. This breaks out. This is, could uh, potentially kick in some real momentum, and if the Nasdaq side continues to outperform and continues to lead, then we should see a good pop in the uh, in the S and P as that begins to catch up. If we do break out and f and uh, actually follow through here on the uh, NASDAQ side. Right now on the NASDAQ side we've got a breakout but no follow through to confirm it just yet. Alright, so drilling down to, to the uh, market internals a little bit a little bit deeper. Here's a look at the uh, NDX S&P cross. This is the value of the NDX divided by the S&P. You can see that we've had a real surge here in, in uh, relative strength in the NDX. That's what's making this ratio curl to the upside. Today we broke and follow through back into the uh, into this previous trading range that had been this reversal area. We had this topping formation here, the retest with this lower high, and then this ultimate breakdown. Right now, we're starting to see some uh, some pretty good price action. We've got a good ways to run here before we run into some some overbought trouble with this ratio. So right now, Nasdaq side continues to uh, to lead pretty well. If we can can continue here and trade to the upside of this, we're probably going to wind up seeing a breakout in the uh, in the S&P side as well. So this is definitely a key chart that we're going to be uh, following going forward. Moving down to, the, that was the weekly time frame, moving down to the, uh, to the daily time frame, you can see the angle of ascent here is pretty sharp. 
It may need a little backing and filling, but uh, unless this uh, fails and loses this uh, this uh, previous trading range, we're still in decent shape here on the bull side. Here's another uh, another internal. Here's the Dow Gold ratio. You can see that we broke trend here when we started to uh, have that uh, kind of sloppy trading where people were starting to take risk off again. We're starting to see a, a little bit better price action here. We're actually curling up to a kind of a key area here in the ratio where we could see a return and uh, and a check-in back into this uh, to this trading range. Keep in mind that when the Dow Gold ratio is on the rise, that indicates that folks are putting on risk in the longer term time frames. So we got to see if we can continue to uh, to hold this trend and kind of recoup this and start to get more of a positive bias. If we do see that positive bias, that's a good long-term indication for the market. Let me switch it real quickly to the weekly time frame just to give you some perspective. So you can see all this risk off that's been happening in the longer term time frame. We did pivot here finally at the end of 2012. So in the relative terms, we've still got plenty of, plenty of room here to go to the upside if the market can uh, can continue to go before we get anywhere near uh, what is uh, terminally or classically overbought in the broad market. All right, so here's a look at the uh, individual sectors ranked from uh, from best to worst. Uh, definitely top gun on the day was not a NASDAQ sector. It was actually a broad market sector, even though the NASDAQ outperformed housing sector. The HGX was up just a little bit less than 4%, which is a real strong showing. Uh, Starting to pivot off the bottom here. Nowhere near anywhere overbought on the time frames here. We'll take a look at that chart in a few minutes. On the NASDAQ side, the BTK was the, uh, was the, was the top gun on the day. There was positive news out of, uh, out of China. And uh, we saw that spill over. And we saw some uh, real positive price action in the cyclicals. And the cyclical, cyclical index definitely outperformed the, uh, the broad market. Also start to, started to see the energy sector come on a little bit. We saw the OSX. Uh, outperform the broad market, so definitely keep an eye on those stocks um, going forward. Last lagger on the day was uh, the gold and silver, and then the more defensive-minded indexes were, were pretty low on the list too. The pharmaceuticals and the utilities uh, were kind of a source of funds and kind of really didn't enjoy, and enjoy the uh, risk on that the rest of the market was uh, was putting on on today's price action. All right, so here's the HGX today. This is Top Gun on the day. A couple notable developments here. We uh, definitely followed through above the 10 EMA here, which puts this into a positive short-term trend, but also took out the uh, 50 DMA uh, all in one candle. So this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good showing here. The other key feature here is we've got this 13 exhaustion on the seeker uh, from uh, actually the beginning of July, and this really didn't make good on itself uh, really until today in an attempt to, ch to change trend. So definitely keep an eye on this. And uh, don't overlook these uh, housing stocks because a lot of these things have kind of been abandoned and have had no, no momentum for a while. MACD is also uh, starting to cross up here. And if we get a, a push above the zero line, we'll really see some uh, momentum develop in this. Keep in mind that if we do push up here a little bit higher, we're going to have some resistance here from the uh, static trend line off this nine bar drop. But that's definitely something the market could handle. And in so doing, if it takes that out, would probably turn the MACD very, very positive. Here's a look at the BTK. BTK is uh, pushed up to a new high close and a new high on the move here. Next real level to watch is going to be this 2250 area, which is going to be eight, the 8 ace level on the Murray Math box. Here's a look at the Oil Services Index, OSX, pushed up uh, fairly strongly today and definitely outperformed the market. We've got this very lateral uh, 13 exhaustion on the seeker. Here's your one bar. And here's your 13 bar, and they're almost the same price. So as we've talked about in the previous reports, this is really essentially just, just marking time here. So we could easily break out here. And keep in mind that if we do close above this two waist level, we're going to frame shift to the upside here and open up the uh, the Murray Math box. The other notable feature here is that we did cro close back above the zero line here on the MACD. So this could be uh, potentially gaining some, uh, some momentum going forward. The... Uh, XAU was the last lagger on the day, essentially inside. So keep an eye on this tomorrow if we do break out of this little, this little mini three-day range. See this three-day range? One, two, three candles. They're all basically inside the same range. Once we resolve this range, this should have some punch to it. Semiconductors were okay today. Um, didn't really uh, show us too much, 
But I think the key development here is that we're trying to get back above the zero line on the uh, on the MACD, and if we do so, we could definitely see some uh, some better momentum develop to the upside. Gold futures on the day didn't do too much. Gold was fairly muted. We do have this little reversal candle here, made a new low, closed up fairly decently, but we didn't get back above the 10 EMA. So right now we're still short-term negative as far as the uh, gold futures go. And here's a look at the uh, the oil futures. We still have this 13 exhaustion in place. We did trade 8 eighths already intraday. If we get back up to 112.50, expect resistance there again. We're still kind of hovering above this uh, this lateral 10 EMA. So right now we're still really just sloppy and lateral here in this very news-driven tape right now for oil futures.